Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab Hello, my name is Clive from Clive's Art at Dart.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me in this quick tip. Well, not so much a quick one, but it, <laughs> it's a tip. <laughs> I've recently done an oval painting of a, a, a seascape in, in the style of Mr. Bob Ross. Now, if you want to see that, please click the i cards. I'll take you directly into that. But this is a preparation video of before I actually done the painting, just working on the oval. And uh, I thought it was important to actually show you this. Now, there's a few things that we actually need um, as far as equipment is concerned and bits and pieces. You need to get some of this polystyrene it's a, like a polystyrene um, between two bits of plastic there you go and um, I had a sheet of this for about three or fifty three pounds fifty that is three pounds fifty in Hobbycraft or uh, um, I'm not sure whether you can get it in I think you can get it in a range as well and um, so that's good stuff it's actually f to, to mount photographs and things on and um, I suppose you could do other things with it but after I investigate that anyway so what I decided to do um, I don't do many ovals but I thought well, it would be a bit of fun if we did it for a change. So I, I marked a full sheet. I've cut the oval out already just to save time. But I come down about an inch and a half there. I've come in an inch there, an inch there, and an inch and a half there. I've also come on the diagonal then five inches, five inches. So we got five inches there, five inches there, one and a half inches there, and one inch there. So... <clears throat> that's working on a 50, 60, 50 by 60 centimeter canvas or I should say that's um, uh, 20 by 23 basically and um, approximately so I did a little line like that I did a little line like that and then I got a, a nice shape to there and I done the same there I drew a little line there and I drew a little sh line there and that's basically how I plotted it out <clears throat> and that's to get my oval so once I got my oval, I got myself a really nice sharp craft knife like that. Um, this is a paper hanger's knife and, and I quite like these ones because they, 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 they're really nice to, to handle. And then I cut around very, very gently, making sure that I'm, I wasn't cutting um, on an angle like that. I'm making sure that the, the actual knife was, let me put it that way, instead of cutting on an angle like that, because you'll have a chamfer, I was actually cutting dead straight and take your time don't rush that so once we've done that um, you can mark that out with a sharpie as well or a, a permanent marker as we know it in in the UK so that we put them one side one second you also need to buy some of this and this is frisket this is what they call frisket um, or um, in the UK uh, it's the stuff you used to put on worktops, you know that sticky back plastic they used to see on Blue Peter? <laughs> sticky back plastic, yes. So that's what this is. Now, don't do what I did, please. Uh, I bought this a bit small, see? It's not exactly wide enough, and because uh, it was the only one there, and I wanted to show you this demonstration, so I thought, okay, I will go on with that. But you can get these in, in, in wider rolls, so please get the wider one. Um, again, how much was this? I paid about four pounds and you can see it's quite a lot of a lot of frisket in there or sticky back plastic and um, I've used that occasionally um, with my airbrush work and etc 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 so all I did after I cut that out is I laid that on the back of my board and I got a little bit of tape and it's come loose typical <laughs> yes this is not the one I made before and uh, I told you, I don't have happy accents. I have major disasters. There we go. So I want to put that. Let's get a bit of tape. So sorry, I had to cut it there. Not the tape, but the video. Because I had to run across the other side of the studio because some tape. <laughs> so we've got some of this tape. Um, if it's a bit small, then you don't, you know, if it's, if it's the right size, you don't need to do this. But I'm doing this because it's a bit small and I don't want it to go loose on me. So I've just tacked that in place. And uh, if you want to tack it in place, you can turn that around. Now, what you want to do is lay that on a nice flat surface. And we need starting in the center. There we go. And we need to cut this oval out following our template. Now, 
once you've got a template it's easy isn't it because all you got to do is lay your masking tape down not your masking tape Clive it's um, frisket lay your frisket down and then just cut around your oval it's all you need to do but take your time make sure you've got a nice clean oval when you're doing this because we're going to be painting over this because this is a mask this is what they call a mask so we need to mask off our our canvas and then just continue and be very careful with these knives because you can have some nasty cuts and my son when he was a little boy managed to get hold of one of these and he was playing with it and he cut his finger really badly right down to the bone and it wasn't nice so i've always been a bit nervous with these things and then you just just remove that oval now if you're doing a smaller canvas with an oval in it i uh, do the same thing um, make a template and then you can use this uh, but never throw this away look there's a lot of a uh, lot of frisket or double-sided tape there uh, sticky back plastic i should say so keep that safe and once we've done that we need to turn this around and let's just get our I'm just gonna cut down there cut down there just to release it off the surface and then we can put our template one side because we don't need that now until next next time and there we have our oval there you go so the next stage now is to actually go to the canvas and show you how we can apply that to the canvas and then show you how to get it set in place. All right, something I don't normally do is stand up. So uh, yeah, it's strange. It is. Let me take my hat off. Okay. Right. So we've got our, our frisket or our sticky back plastic and now we need to get that on there. So we need to position that pretty well. Um, before we do that, I think it's a good idea. Uh, if you get your pencil, um, I'm just going to use a watercolour pencil for now. Where would I put my tape? Where would I put my measuring stick? It's a rule. Actually, it's not a rule. Actually, I forgot what camera I was on. Actually, it's not a rule. It's a ruler. No, it's a ruler. No, it's not a rule. Actually, it's not a, a ruler. It's a rule. It is. A ruler is somebody that rules a country. Yes. So I was told. <laughs> so 50 centimetre, that's 25 there. That's the centre and 60 centimeters um, which is 30 which is there so we know our center points there i think that's a good thing to do and um, because that's going to help us get, get this get this on there um, fairly square fairly square we need to make sure that's on there very fairly square now i've got a tip i've got a tip i'm gonna run across here i'll show you something now Woo <laughs> sorry <laughs> right this is double-sided sticky tape or a nostal that sticky back plastic or frisket and what you're going to do is you're going to be there for hours and hours and hours trying to get this edge off you to release it and that, what i learned years ago was and this is a tip because i use a lot of frisket when i was airbrushing is to get a little bit of tape see a little bit of cellos tape like that stick it onto a corner of your sticky back plastic and as you remove that there we go the actual sticky back plastic comes away quite easy so you don't have to mess about trying to find that edge now we've released that now we need to do um this is another thing you need to get hold of is a, a plastic gift card or credit card or so i'm just using a, a national lottery ticket card thing so i picked up a couple of these and um i thought they were quite handy for scrapers uh okay so we need to release this very 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 careful with this you need to be very 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 careful with this because this can get you can get in such a mess doing this so let's get that roughly equal so i'm just working off a corner i'm getting that spend a little bit of time we know it's right across the top edge we need to make sure that's virtually in center and let's just tack that in place making sure they are coming down to where I want them and that's okay a little bit more this way just a tad there we go just pushing that down making sure that's secure just giving us an edge now now that corner secure pull just the top be very careful you don't rip this because it is 
strong but it can tear and what you want to do is make sure that you don't do that and make sure it doesn't fall back on itself because it can stick and once it sticks it's a nightmare to actually release so nice and gently now get your your card and you can stick this stuff you can stick this this this, this frisket stuff you can stick this on your iPhones and iPads that's what I do save myself some money <laughs> but make sure you don't cover up the <laughs> the the um the camera and that but uh, yeah, good little screen protectors because that's all it is. That's all it is is a little bit of frisket. Save yourself some money. Okay, let's get that down there. As you can see, there is a gap, so I'm going to recover that in a second. Please make sure you buy the right size because I just had to go with this size because it was all they had left in stock. So I'm just taking my time, very very gently, going down trying to release any air bubbles that's all you're doing with this card is trying to get all those air bubbles out this has already been pre-primed with two coats of white gesso don't put this on what I call naked naked canvas because the grease spots will react against the the, 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 the adhesive on the plastic on the frisket on the sticky back plastic so make sure you double just prime the, the board with gesso white or black depending on what you're going to be painting and that's the key so let's get this down nice and gently we'll keep take your time don't rush there's no rush in this you need to do a really good job let's make sure if you've got a little bit of a bubble like that let's just drop on the floor a little bit of bubble like that just lift the edge don't press too hard lift the edge get that to sit correct it doesn't always want to sit correct it doesn't play game it plays games with you sometimes this stuff it's not it's not designed to be helpful but we will get there we'll just take our time work with it work with it don't worry if there's a little bit of a, a snag there here and there I don't know why that's not sitting correctly and just get down ground level and then just pull let's get that to sit that's what it is is because it's just slightly out there there you go see how a little bit of a bit of time a little bit of patience and we can get that on there and, you know, and the painting that you're going to be doing with with this is a little bit more advanced um, it's, I wouldn't say it was a beginner's it was more of a, an advanced beginner but it's something you can do and have fun with so once we've done that make sure that's all nice and secure get that down there Let's trim any excess off because that can cause problems for us there we go trim any excess off and go away from the canvas when you do this don't go into the canvas use use the canvas as a bit of a guide but just let the knife do its job and it will trim that for you so let's push that down what we're going to need then is, let me just get rid of that. What we're going to need then, Clive, what we're going to need, what we're going to need then is some decorators, um, decorators tape. This is masking tape. Now you can get blue tape, it's the same thing, but you want low tack. You don't want anything that's too strong. So if you could pick up, it'll say on the, on the label actually, it'll say um, low tack, but if it's not low tack, and you but which this isn't you want to just put it on your clothing like that and then just pull it off there you go and that's going to there's going to be enough fibers in that to stop it sticking 100 percent so what we need to do with this now is we need to go down oh let's get another roll because that's got damp there we go i got a bigger roll here there we are we reduce this one that's half inch this is an inch so I just happened to have another roll because that's gone damp and there we go it's just, sometimes it, it does that so we need to measure that and this one is low tack so I'm okay um, I did put it out but I couldn't remember where I put it because I've gone over that one edge I've decided I'm going to go down because I don't want to get any paint on there so I'm just going to trim that I'm going to tack that down like that 
because you don't want any paint in this area this is what we're trying to keep that's that's our oval that's what we're trying to maintain so let's go down, let's go down this edge and don't stab yourself in the cheek with a knife like i just did oh, it's not nice you know can't get blood off a canvas very well <laughs> So let's make sure all that area is absolutely masked off 100% because we don't want paint on a, a white border. And that's all it is really, isn't it? It's just a border. There you go. Not the simplest way, but it works for me. And as you know, if it works for me, then that's fine. And that's what I've always done. That's the way I've always actually did this, even when I was oil painting. Um, in, in the Bob Ross style and I, I've done many many paintings uh, in this style uh, over the years and uh, so has my brother my brother actually went to, to learn um, with the Bob Ross masters you know the, the, the teachers he actually went on the course and he learned all that and he was I don't sure if he was qualified or afterwards or not I don't know exactly how it works and then he taught me and that's, this is how I basically learned to do the Bob Ross techniques but unfortunately ill health prevented me from carrying on with oils okay so the next stage now is to seal this to that because if we just paint on that now the paint is going to go underneath and it's going to make all funny bleed marks and we don't want that we need to seal this completely 100 percent and the way i found with acrylics to do that is quite simply gesso it and we are so we're going to get our gesso and we're going to gesso this on making sure that it's nice and thick actually on that area there now you've seen me do something similar to this I'm going to gesso all over that actually because otherwise if my paint my acrylic paint goes onto this plastic it's not going to stick and I don't, I, I don't want it to stick onto the plastic because when we remove that you're going to have a cleaner cut or a cleaner shape and this is um, I've just something I've just worked on over the years and it does really does really work so um, it's a tried and tested method and like everything else it takes a bit of time when we pre prep in canvases like this and if we do get a little bit of bleed through later on well that's okay we can recover that but you know you don't if you can prevent it from happening in the first place that's better now that's just going to rise a little bit but we don't worry too much about that it'll settle down I'll settle down get that nice and thick make sure that dries around that edge there like that because we're going to put some more gesso on this later this is just to seal that sticky back plastic or frisk it in place and that's all we are trying to do is make sure that when we paint on this we don't get any bleed through and that's all that we are worried about at this stage so why not let's just continue and Put some gesso straight over there because I got some in the pot there's no point wasting it let's just spread that on like that and we've got to wait for that to dry before we move on to the next stage because we're going to be painting on um, black and grey today and I think it's it's a, it's a fantastic way to actually do a, a seascape and if you've never painted a seascape before try this now you don't have to you don't have to paint an oval <clears throat> so if you want to watch the video and you just want to paint a normal um, canvas then you can do it in exactly the same way I'm just doing an oval because this is what um, this is what Bob Ross used to do and I thought it would be nice if I brought a couple of his techniques into acrylics and um, just showed you that it's a possibility that yes even with acrylics you can paint in that style and it's a style of painting um, which I'm really, really, really enjoyed over the years, and I'm so happy that I made managed to sort out some products that work really well with acrylics to enable me to continue my love of this style of painting. Okay, so let's put that in the pot. I'm going to dry this, and then when I come back, we're going to put um, the other gesso on. I to sit down because my legs are hurting. <laughs> I got arthritis and it's, it's not nice. Okay, don't be not worried about that, are we? No. Right, we need to um, 
Get a little bit of our masking tape again. Try and get low tack if you can. And uh, be very careful when you do this because you don't want this to actually lift that off. Now it shouldn't if it's dry. So we want to go our horizon line. This is our horizon line. We want to try and just across the top edge like that. There you go. Just across the top edge like that. That's all we want to worry about. Making sure that it's not going to come off. If it's a low tack, it might take a little bit of persuasion to stick. But just keep rubbing your finger across there like that. Now, where did I put my brush? There it is. I have mixed some black gesso and some white gesso together. And I've got a little bit of grey. Which is, no, it's not sticking. Sticky stick, stick, stick. There you go. And we want to do is put some grey gesso this time on the top of that nice grey gesso. Get a nice light grey. You don't want anything too dark. And um, it's a bit light, nice light grey. Something like that. That'd be fine anyway. I'm happy with that. So let's just put that around that edge and make sure that goes right in. Cover that up like that. There you go bit of fun. I never um, done any other shapes really because I know you can do other shapes in this method so but it's a bit of fun something different you could you could have like an arch couldn't you you could just do an arch so it, it just opens up another avenue for you and um, painting in this style I think is, is great so we need to get that come on it's not sticking doesn't matter we don't rush, we don't stress, we just have fun in our studio and I'm glad you were here with me today. I enjoy my painting, it helps me um, with my health, it's certainly helped my concentration after I had the stroke and um, between Mr Ross and my friend Dawn, <laughs> helped me out a lot actually, it did, yes. Okay, so nice, nice and gentle. Let's just get that a nice, nice even coat across there like that. That's all we need to do: wash your brush, put your gesso hey, on one side, get your hair dryer, and dry that off once more. It's time to run with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. And once we've done that, and don't worry if you haven't, you know, if, if it's a little, I got a little bit of white showing through there, um, but this is going to be my sky, so I'm not overly worried about that. It's just going to add to the to, to, to the flavour of the painting. So take your paint, your masking tape off by pulling a downwards like of that. And you can see what I mean. There's a little bit of bleed through, and that's not what we want. Um, around this edge if we can help it but if it happens then we'll have to sharpen it up but there we go <laughs> we don't know until we remove it <laughs> we're not removing it for a while so just going to continue to dry that edge off Using the same bit of masking tape or a new piece of masking tape, it matters not. You want to put that then on that line. There you go. Making sure that's nice and straight. There you go. Making sure that's nice and straight. Pushing that down. Now what we're going to do um, is get another brush. i got another brush here. I don't want to wash another brush. <clears throat> Black. Black gesso. Black gesso. Black gesso. So do all the cameras. <laughs> and now this is gonna go on here. Yeah. Now it looks weird, doesn't it? Because we got grey and black. What are we gonna do with that? Well, we know we're gonna paint some sort of a seascape, and this is painted, this is done, and I'm gonna try and do it in the same time as Mr. Bress Ross did, but I don't know if I'm gonna be successful. But that's the mission. Yes, if you wish to accept it, paint along with me in the studio. In under 35 minutes. <laughs> Ooh, challenge. I like challenges. I do. Bring in acrylics. Or should I say bring in Mr. Bob Ross's techniques to acrylics. Yes. Can it be done? Well, I've been...
playing around with this idea for years and as I said I've actually developed some products that do work and um, I used to love painting in oils I used to love painting this method and I couldn't work with oils anymore and I had to find another way of doing it which I did and it took a long time and a lot of research and to find and develop some of my own types of techniques and painting methods to actually accomplish that I know I've accomplished it I'm quite proud of the fact that I'm passing that information on to people as yourself there you go and there'll be loads more of Mr Ross's paintings being done there'll be more uh, paintings in this style being done so they're all going to be available in the iCards I'm going to put um, a, a link there for the Bob Ross style lessons so every time you come onto one of these uh, lessons just click on that iCard it'll drop down and any new ones I do will automatically be added to that so you'll never not know what I've done or where they are but you can always pop along to my website www.cly5art.co.uk where I've got a page there for playlists so just go there there's a little um, you'll see a little picture and then you click on that that's going to take you into playlists and it's updated every single week yes so let's try this and once that's done again remove this masking tape very 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 gently there's still a little bit of a bleed through there but we can manage with that that is not a problem and um, we can always sharpen things up later so we have put our frisket or our sticky back plastic on after we've cut it the size and we've uh, put that on with a, a spreader to get the air bubbles out if it's a little bit loose here and there that will settle down we've secured that in place then with a coat of white gesso making sure that that's gone in around the edge we have then put a, a gray gesso on put an horizon line in put some black gesso in so this is the stage you need to get to before we go and do the painting so I want to welcome you to that please press the i card if this is the first thing you've seen but if you want to go on to the painting which is that one there then please join me in the studio for the main feature yes so that's going to be filmed in entirety so this is the preparation video and I'll see you there noise hey welcome thanks for stopping by it's time to learn with our friend Clive so grab your brush, have a great time And don't forget to click subscribe Visit Clive5R.co.uk